you know, I have a few things I found. I, was, I look for things every day, art related stuff, you know, mostly. Uh, and it connects to, sometimes I'll find some stuff that, anyway, you know, connects to, to uh, history stuff. So, uh, but this, this is one, uh, has to do with, you know, the eclipse stuff. And then I'm the, found one about uh, uh, the terracotta soldiers. The terracotta soldiers in soldiers in China there too. Yeah. I'll get to that at the end. So, but anyway, there as we go. Uh, Seven hundred years of art inspired by eclipses uh, from 13th century China to 19th century France. Eclipses have, mesmer have mesmerized and inspired many artists. And I apologize again for the fan because it's hot here uh, and the children in the background there. But anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, that's awesome there. Uh, this was, this is from yesterday, and I just found it today, because, you know, I, I was busy yesterday, the, watching the eclipse myself and other things. Uh, it says the artists have captured eclipses from their own perspectives through men, through the centuries. Uh, it was a, an exhibit, it's an exhibit at the Princeton Art Museum. Shows one artist's representation of the 1918, 1918 total eclipse. I should have looked that up. Anyway, uh, you can look that up yourself there if you want. There, uh, the last full eclipse whose path crossed the continental U.S. was Howard Russell Butler. Uh, paint, his paintings are serene, are serene but powerful perspective that photographs can't quite capture. That's true. Uh, the moment when the moon passes directly in front of the sun, revealing the glorious rays of the sun's corona. That looks like a sketch right there. Uh, his aim was to merge art and science and create an impactful but scientifically accurate vision of the eclipse, similar to artists' depictions of human anatomy or drawings of geological change. Images like these defy the limits of vision by fixing or revealing features and nuances of form that are not visible through first-hand observation. She writes on the, web, the website there. It's, uh, and here in ancient China, for instance, people believed that an eclipse was evidence that a dragon was trying to swallow the sun. Ha, ha, ha. You know, anyway, they thought all kinds of things, then sacrifices to bring the sun back and all that crap. So we were, me and the... the my boy was joking about that yesterday, you know. <laughs> anyway, it was funny. Uh, and uh, here it says, an exquisite jade statuette shows this terrifying act in progress, you know. Uh, in 1500, the painter Antoine Caron imagined the eclipse vastly differently as almost a volcano in the sky. His painting Dionysus the Aeropagite Converting the pagan philosophers used the fiery red eclipse as a dramatic, chaotic backdrop, backdrop to the classical, symmetrical lines of a Roman-style city. And here's one from France. They used uh, George Mendes used the eclipse as inspiration for a film with a title that translates to the eclipse: The Courtship of the Sun and the Moon. This is a nine-minute film. This is it right here. I think. Yeah. Uh, I haven't looked at it yet, but. And other artists have there as well. You know, you can look at them, and I want to look at this. Uh, that is pretty neat, there. I like that. Uh, I'm gonna look at this dude here. So, uh, got it pulled up. So, uh, but you know, you can search it yourself. When this page is still up. there's that Dionysus D converting the pagan philosophers there, and it was loaded, but uh, it's coming there. But anyway, uh. Is as it says it is as igna enigmatic to us as the solar eclipse would have been to 16th century witnesses. The painting shows a Greco-Roman land cityscape with a group of men centered in the foreground, mirrored by another group of men in the middle ground. The background, in the background, people run in different directions. Like, oh my God! Oh my God! You know, where's the sun going? Anyway. The chaos of the scene is heightened and dramatized by the blackened disc with an orange aura that looms in the darkening incarnadine sky. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that. In the midst of the chaos, the geometric architecture provides a sense of solid 
solidity and stability that is reinforced by the calm of the central foreground figures. The identity of the foreground figures and the na nature of the celestial men are equally ambiguous. Many historians believe he was emulating Raphael's school of Athens and that the celestial event is a solar eclipse. And they had occurred in both 1571 and 74. And maybe that was his inspiration. Uh, the unusual color of the sky may instead represent blood and rain, a phenomenon still not completely understood. Um, anyway, uh, they've been at, they've been identified the buildings there. That, you know, you can read more of that, and I'm waiting to see if this picture's going to load, so you can see it uh, there. So uh, I'll maybe come back to it, I guess. Uh, and here's about Howard Russell Butler uh, and what he did with the eclipse there in 1907, I think I said, uh, using, you know, art and science there. So that's awesome uh, to do that. So, uh um, gives you a new perspective of it is what he was doing so um that's that's all there hang on just a minute I'm waiting for out of the picture to load so just give me just a minute here anyway, anyway it won't fully load there so i'm gonna have to close it because it's bogging me down and the other people in the world is watching me anyway there you i'll leave the link and you can look at it there so um but anyway uh, yeah, I'd read about that, so, uh, you know, check this stuff out, it's really cool, uh, there, so, that's all it is, that's just that, uh, but this here, it tells all about him and stuff, uh, and this, you know, 90% of the sun was covered here, you know, it went through my state, there, so, we missed the main, that we missed the full cover of it, but we saw like, I think we saw when it was like 80, 70 to 80 percent covered, if we missed the, uh, oh, uh, but, here we go, uh, there, you can look at this, anyway, okay, but anyway, uh, you can look, you know, come and look at this stuff and say, well, I can't do it, because, uh, bandwidth issues that they won't believe me about, but anyway, it's, got to do with the local area bandwidth and everything and it affects as you know it affects everybody in the area anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close that on down here so, anyway uh, Chinese art and antiques market shrinks as non-payment remains a chronic problem Failure by buyers to pay for works of art they have successfully won at auction in China remains a major problem for the industry, according to the latest report. You know, I mean, look at how they're doing the economies of every country. So that's not no surprise there. Uh, so. A uh, larger percentage of the total sales came from high-end sales where the more payment in installments and delayed payments are more common which led the overall payment rate to drop to 51% in 2016. Only just over half of the lots sold at auction were actually paid for. Uh, so, mirroring the wider global auction sector, the Chinese market has suffered from a reduced supply of art and antiques for sale. Global auction sales of Chinese art and antiques slipped 5% in 2016, totaling 6.7 billion. The second year in a row declined, like I said, you know, that's no surprise the decline in the economy that they orchestrated here, so y'all too, y'all y'all know this too, so y'all that that's watching and don't know, you know. Uh yeah, it's it's all set set up to fail. So anyway there. Um just thought I would show this here really quick. That's pretty much it there. So uh but anyway I'm gonna get to the terracotta soldiers. That's that's Oh, it's always fascinating. Uh, some secrets of China's terracotta army are baked in the clay. Craftsmen used local materials and signature ceramic recipes to shape the warriors in their entourage. So, check that out. That's pretty cool. Creepy, but cool. <laughs> so, um, built 2,200 years ago in the tomb of China's first emperor. So, 
airspace. Uh, built in between 247 BC and 210 BC. Uh, they gathered clay from nearby deposits and prepared it in at least three forms. Mm, so, uh, on site or nearby workshops. Use different clay recipes for terracotta soldiers. Parts of mostly bronze waterfowl figures and paving bricks for pits in which the soldiers originally stood. There's more than, let's see, it says around 7,000 ceramic foot soldiers, generals, and horses equipped with a variety of bronze weapons to make up the army, which was accidentally discovered in 74 by farmers digging a well. Ooh. I mean, that shows you there how important this person is. What, it, you know, people forget these things, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, you think, you know, he, 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 obviously, he didn't want to be forgotten, but yeah, he, where this was, was farmland, became farmland, so, ha <laughs> ha, yeah, but anyway, here he is, Quinn Shu Huang, founder of the Queen, King, however you say that, dynasty, and first emperor of a unified China, uh, he became the king, Zing and Queen, he, how he say, when he was 13, then China's first emperor when he was 38 after the Queen had conquered all of the warring states and unified all of China. Um, but he's also responsible for the Great Wall, it says on down here. I'm not going to read all this because I don't have a lot of time left here. And probably going to upload this right now. It's 4.57 p.m. So, uh, it's 8.22 to 0.17. Uh, here we go. It just tells about his life and everything. He was uh, assassination attempts and coup attempts and all that stuff there. So, um, you, you know, uh, these are the type of the people, type of people that still ruin us today is people who, like, you know, he, he started that, that first dynasty in China. So, uh, but now it's, it may be a different name, but it's the same assholes. So, anyway, uh, you see the Great Wall and that canal there. The elixir of life he lived for, never found, and he said, that's how he died there. Uh, he took uh, mercury pills <laughs> made by his alchemists and physicians. Ironically, they were meant to make him immortal, but they fucking killed him. Ha <laughs> ha. It's hilarious. Uh, but anyway. Uh, there is all that, and I'm, I'll leave the search for that too. Though. There's more you can look at on that too. So, uh, but uh, anyway, that's just some stuff I found interesting there, you know. Uh, so, but uh, thank y'all for watching, and much love to everybody. And hope you've had a good day and everything. So, uh, and I'll see you sometime again. So, bye.